Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Jen Forand. I'm a college counselor here at Campus Bound, and today I'll be discussing the importance of creating a standardized testing plan and how standardized testing is used in college admissions. Now that the PSATs have been released in early December, students are starting to consider what role standardized testing will play in their college process. Hopefully the information shared today will help you plan and understand the importance of testing in the admissions process review. So before we talk about the actual test, let's talk about test optional. During the pandemic, most schools dropped their testing requirement due to the cancellation of exams. Now that exams are being offered at the same pre-pandemic rate, we are starting to see schools slowly start to require testing again. However, many schools decided to use the opportunity to run a three, four, even five year test optional pilot program, or they dropped the requirement indefinitely. Bottom line, there are more test optional applications available now than in 2019. So our suggestion is that regardless of the number of schools offering a test optional policy, students should still prepare to take the test. Many test optional schools value test scores. And as I mentioned, several schools are either adding the test requirement back to their, after their pilot programs are coming to an end. And taking the test ensures that students are not closing any doors on opportunities. The good news is that students can always choose whether or not to send testing to a test optional school. And that decision is made on a case by case basis. So more on that later. So one of the most frequently asked questions about applying test optional is what admissions representatives will evaluate instead of testing. The answer is your transcript specifically your grades and the challenge and rigor of your curriculum. This will be the only way that admissions will be able to assess your readiness for college level work. Applying test optional does not mean that resume recommendations or other pieces of the application become more important. Those other pieces of your application are important, but will not be taken into consideration when the school is assessing your academic readiness. Those pieces do come into play when a student is clearly an academic fit for the school and admissions moves on to assess the student's talents, character, and what they could potentially contribute to campus. So how do you learn about testing policies? So fairtest.org is a fantastic database to start basic information, to start with a basic information search about whether a school is test optional and if they have a policy that is set to expire. However, we always want students to read the fine print and cross-reference fair test or other general sites with the school-specific website. There could be fine print that excludes certain students from applying test optional. Some schools require uh, a test optional application to have a minimum GPA that all students applying to a specialized major like nursing, send testing, that certain types of applicant applicants like international or homeschooled students send testing and as mentioned that a policy may be up for review and that it may not apply to current juniors a lot what we're seeing is a lot of um, policies that were pilot programs expire in 2023 so they will only be available to current seniors so before we move on, we'll just give you two examples of testing policies, just so you can kind of get familiar with the type of um, websites and language to look for. So this is Coastal Carolina's test optional policy, which is an example of a policy with the minimum GPA. Coastal is asking that only students with a 3.5 GPA or higher consider not sending their testing. They do want all other students to send testing. This is UMass Amherst's test optional policy. This is a great example of a policy that's going to expire. The class of 2022, our current senior class, will be the last class to take advantage of this. UMass and other schools like them will likely announce the future of their test optional policy closer to the summer of 2023. All right, so let's now talk about planning for the tests. First thing you need to do is identify which test to take. We don't recommend that students take both the SAT and the ACT. It results in test fatigue, not higher scores. We suggest that students take a practice ACT and SAT, then choose the test that is best for them. We refer to these as diagnostic tests. 
So when should you take a diagnostic test? Diagnostic tests should be taken at the same time. If your school offers a pre-ACT sophomore year and a PSAT junior year, we suggest that you take another diagnostic ACT your junior year. It's important to make sure that you as a student are the same age and have the same information um, in your tool belt when you're taking both of the exams. So it will be a better way to compare and contrast what's the best test for you to take. So I will show you a concordance table on the next slide, but we ideally want students to go with the test that's resulted in the higher score. If your scores are similar, we want you to think about the tests that made you feel the most comfortable. Um, did you like that the SAT offered a bit more time per question, or did you really enjoy having a calculator during the entire ACT? But ideally, we would like you to choose a test by winter break. So after students identify which test they're going to take, students should take two tests with preparation. Most schools will super score tests, meaning they will take the highest score in each section regardless of when it was taken. So it is in a student's best interest to take it more than once, but not too many times. Taking it three or four times will not necessarily result in a higher score. And what it will do is increase stress levels and take away from other pieces of the application process. So when should students take the test? Students should review the test days offered and choose a date that fits their schedule when they have a few months prior to prep before the sitting. What is the best preparation? This varies from student to student. Some students use free resources like Khan Academy for SAT, ACT Academy for ACT. Some use a private tutor or a class. As long as the student is engaged in their prep, that is the most important piece. I also suggest that students take a few full length time practice tests and score them so they can hone their strategy. That's really important. And then lastly, should I take the ACT with writing? So the SAT dropped their essay component last year, but the ACT still does offer a writing section. The answer to that question is probably not. So on the screen, you will see the schools that still recommend or require the ACT with writing. If you know you're going to have one of these schools on your list, or there's a good possibility that one of these schools will be on your list, then you should take it with writing. If not, then you do not need to take the writing section. So now let's revisit how to choose which test to take after your diagnostic testing. So here's the concordance table I mentioned with two examples. The first one is a student with a diagnostic SAT of 1150 and a diagnostic ACT of 20. In that scenario, our recommendation would be to register, prep, and take the SAT. Example two shows a diagnostic SAT of 1400 and a diagnostic ACT of 34. Our recommendation in that scenario would be to register prep and sit for the ACT. If you fall in the yellow judgment call area, the student should reflect and take the test they are most comfortable with and prepare, register, and sit for that test. All right, to send or not to send, this is something that is quite nuanced and we do spend a lot of time discussing this with our clients when it comes time to sending applications. But here is a shortened version of our best practices. If a school is test optional, the student should compare their scores to the middle range of accepted students. We use resources like a school's common data set and freshman class profile, along with high school resources like Naviance or SCORE to determine this. If you are above the mid-range, then you should send. If you are below the mid-range, we recommend not setting, sending. If you are in the middle of the range and you're not sure if you should send, consider your grades. Do your grades showcase your true abilities as a student? Were you able to take advantage of a rigorous high school curriculum? If the answer is no, you may want to consider sending your test scores so an admissions rep has another data point to assess your potential success. Finally, before I let you go, these are the SAT and ACT dates for the upcoming year. 
register for the SAT on College Board and the ACT on ACT.org. Thank you for taking the time to view our presentation today. If you have any questions or are interested in setting up a complimentary consultation to discuss the college admissions process further, don't hesitate to reach out.